1920s was a decade packed with political action. The Indian subcontinent had opened 1920 with a new sense of awakening. The world had been changing. The First World War had had a far-reaching impact across Africa and Asia. The drum beats for freedom were getting louder, and in Russia in 1917, regular folks, workers and peasants had brought down the powerful Tsarist regime and led a revolution by the Bolsheviks or the Communist Party. All this acted as a perfect backdrop as a deeper change was sweeping through India. This decade saw the rise of Mahatma Gandhi as a national leader as he took the Indian national movement to the most remote corners of the subcontinent. As the movement went deep, it embraced millions of Indians and also spawned new expressions of protest against the excesses of British rule as well as old class struggles from Kerala to Assam. There was also a strong revolutionary fervour that saw many take up arms. By the end of the 1920s, there was no ambiguity. Purna Swaraj, or complete freedom, was all that mattered. A new national flag was unfurled in December 1929 and 26 January 1930 was declared India's Independence Day. So how did these events unfold? The decade opened with the Indian National Congress taking up the cause of Turkey's Ottoman Sultan, who was also seen as a spiritual head or caliph of Islam. His poor treatment after the war had united Muslims in India and across the world, and leaders of the Congress, especially Gandhi, saw in this a great opportunity to unite Hindus and Muslims in India. As Gandhi supported the Khilafat cause, he also announced the beginning of the first non-cooperation movement, a mass boycott of British goods and institutions. In what would be the first of Gandhi's national-level mass movements, thousands left schools, government jobs and lucrative professions. British imports were boycotted and in the next few years, homemade, hand-spun khadi became India's symbol of self-reliance. However, the sudden withdrawal of the mass movement after mob violence left over 20 constables killed in Chori Chora in Gorakhpur created dissent within the ranks. At the meet in Bardoli in Gujarat, the Congress Working Committee called off all protests and asked for a deep look within, urging members to promote communal harmony, remove untouchability and work for welfare. Many couldn't understand why the protests were called off. Others blamed Gandhi for a U-turn just when the freedom movement was building critical mass. This was a time of divisions. At first, the old guard of the Congress, leaders like Bipin Chandra Pal, Annie Besant and Muhammad Ali Jinnah left to protest against the strategy of hartals and boycotts. Then leaders like Motilal Nehru and Chituranjan Das left to form the Swaraja Party and fight provincial elections. Others turned virulent critics, adopting revolutionary methods. In 1922, Gandhi faced his first long stint in prison. He spent two years in after he was accused of sedition for articles he wrote in Young India. The period also saw the rise of communism in India. Emin Roy became the first Indian to be part of the Communist International, a Soviet-led international body that advocated world communism. In 1925, the Communist Party of India was born and trade union movements took root across the subcontinent. The withdrawal of the non-cooperation movement also led to a revival of the revolutionaries. In 1928, the Hindustan Republican Revolution Party was born under the leadership of Chandrasekhar Azad to take on an armed struggle after the British used brute force to bring down conspirators. In 1928, Lala Lajpatrai was also wounded in a Lati charge and he died. By the end of the 1920s, there were new heroes in India's struggle for freedom. Inspiring young men like Bhagat Singh who were hanged for exacting revenge on Rai's killer. 
but it is a testament to the power of Mahatma Gandhi's ideas and his political acumen that despite all these movements, it was he who inspired change the most. By the end of the decade, the Mahatma was back, taking on the government over the all-white Simon Commission and marching 375 kilometers to Dundee to defiantly break the salt laws. As Jawaharlal Nehru would later write in his Discovery of India, the essence of Gandhi's teachings was fearlessness, not merely body courage, but the absence of fear from the mind. In this decade of the 1920s, Gandhi inspired Indians to be the change they wanted. No wonder then that by the end of the decade, it was a resurgent and confident Congress that demanded complete freedom of Purna Swaraj and unfurled the first version of India's tricolor. It also resolved to celebrate the 26th of January, starting 1930, as a day of India's independence. This was 17 years before she was actually free. <laughs>